Welcome, Eurists, to Dwarf Fortress. This is going to be a video all about hacking Dwarf Fortress, uh, putting in different helpers and applications that will actually just make your, that will enhance your Dwarf Fortress experience and make the game, I guess, in one sense, um, easier if you want it to be. Um, it will certainly make it give, it'll give you uh, apps that will actually sort of just give you a little bit of a, a push along where you need to have it. It will fix some of the little problems in Dwarf Fortress as well. It may help with your fr frame rates if you've got like a, if your computer is struggling, there may be reasons behind that where this can actually help with that as well. There's a lot of reasons to embrace, particularly DF Hack. You can see this in the in the corner up through here. DF Hack is, a, is literally a library of applications that uh, just run to enhance Dwarf Fortress. It's uh, not new, even though Dwarf Fortress for Steam is a new program. I'm going to be addressing this as if you haven't really ever used DF Hack before. But DF Hack has been around for an awfully long time and really is a staple of the older versions of the game, the, the pre-Steam version. And even though the Steam version is so much easier to get into than the previous version, it still is actually one of these aspects where DF Hack enhances so much of the experience. It's really, really great the way it sort of does actually work. Now I'm going to be loading in a game that, uh, well, I'll load in my um, YouTube video. I've also got like a Twitch version as well, but I think I'll actually load in the, the YouTube video because there's a lot of things that DF Hack can help with with that current one and um, and so I'll talk a little bit about uh, what what each of these different programs do uh, like I'll be talking about Dwarf Therapist as well as um, DF Hack this is going to be a longish video of a guest but I do want to sort of do a fairly deep dive into these different sorts of things talk about some of the, I think some of the some of the aspects of um, of DF Hack that will, you, you will enjoy using yourself, and I'll also then show you how to use those, how they are applied. It's is it simple? No, it's not simple, <laughs> but it really does enhance the gameplay. And so it's one of those things. If you get used to it, it's it, it is it isn't hard. It's just not super super easy. It's not like a, a a plug it in and click a button and away you go. Even installing it is a little bit tricky so I'll go through that as well. Maybe I'll start there actually going through both the installation of DF Hack and also Dwarf Therapist. Now Dwarf Therapist is a standalone program you don't need to have DF Hack to to run that. There are other applications that rely on DF Hack so DF Hack stands for Dwarf Fortress Hack of course but, um, but Dwarf Therapist and there may be a reason you don't really need Dwarf Therapist, but I'll go through why you may want to put it in. Now, I think that I might even start there because that's a bit of a, that's not really anything that is super, super, um, as you know, I think I'll start with DF Hack because that DF Hack is the almost the essential add-on for the game. And Dwarf Therapist is one that is a nice to have if you're wanting to extend your uh, understanding of how the dwarves actually work. So let's get into it. Uh, I'll go through how to install it. If it, uh, if it is installed correctly, you will sort of see it up in the top corner of your screen when you actually open up the game. Also, you will actually end up with another another system in through here, like a essentially just a command screen uh, where you've actually got like a like literally like one of the old command windows from DOS, you know, like it's sort of, it's that sort of thing where you can actually, it's got DF hack ready to run and you can do all sorts of different things in here. Like you can just do a question mark and press enter and it will then give you information about DF hack. There's a lot of things in there. I'll, I'll explain all this when we get into it, but I won't be trying, I'll be trying to get around, I guess, the more complex side. So I will try to gear this to a newish player. So I will be going through slowly and, uh, and explaining what I, what, as I go. Now, to install uh, DF Hack, you have to have Dwarf, uh, like Dwarf Fortress stopped. You, you really have to sort of, you can't just put it into, a, into an already running game of Dwarf Fortress. So I will quit out of that and we'll come back. All right, so step number one, make sure that you actually have got your browser open and what you're going to be typing in the top of this is going to be docs, so D-O-C-S dot, and then D-F hack, so D-F-H-A-C-K uh, dot org. Okay, that's all you're going to be typing in there, docs dot D-F hack dot org. Now, I will have a link in the description as well, but that's what you need to do. When you go there, it's then going to open up the, um, I guess, the documentation for DF Hack. This is the easiest way to get into it, by the way. Uh, you'll see that you've got quick links at the top, and so we're going to go straight through to downloads. 
I would look if you if you've got the time and the inclination. I would actually have a bit of a read through. It's it really is very very well written. Uh, it's got all sorts of different guides as to how to do different things, what they all actually are, how things work, what each of the actual individual tools are. Uh, there's so many involved. There's a lot that aren't in here yet that will be coming as well. So we're looking at, uh, this is Alpha 2 uh, that I'm going to be showing you. And uh, this is still very, very early days. Um, it's I'm surprised that DF Hack came out as early as it did. But they're, what they're doing is they're slowly introducing the new applications or the, the, the old applications, but in a new way over time. So um, there's, there's some good things in this in this latest Alpha 2. There'll be more things coming over time. So there's a, I won't be going through all of the different applications inside this, but I'll be going through a fair, a fair portion of them. There's a lot of the important ones are already now actually back in DF Hack. So we're going to go to Downloads and we're just going to go and click on that one. It will then take us to whatever the current version actually is. And this is DF Hack 50.05 hyphen Alpha 2. Now, we're expecting that there'll be another release of, Dear, uh, of Dwarf Fortress fairly soon. And then there should be another DF hack sort of around that, that, that one as well. So I'm not sure that that may or may not sort of work properly at that point in time. When the next one actually upgrades, you may have to then come back in and, and load it in again. It's one of those things, once you get used to what DF hack does, you, will, you won't mind coming back in and grabbing it because it, it adds so much to the game. Uh, right, so when we got down through here, it's then just got like the installation instructions, which I'll go through um, after I download it. It's got a quick start guide there as to what the different things actually are. I'll, I'll explain that without showing you in, in, in through here. As you come back through here, this is actually one of the most um, confusing aspects of actually loading in DF Hack. You have to scroll down through the bottom of all of this stuff until you see a little area saying assets and assets you have to then go and open this up so this is the tricky bit click on assets open it up and at the moment there's only versions for windows at time of recording there may be other versions by the time you actually decide to come in and actually load it in yourself and so we've got df hack um, alpha 2 windows 64 bit don't worry about the source code don't load those in they're not going to help you but the um, you want to have this uh, compiled version this zip file in through here so you just click on that one that will then load in so it just takes a couple of seconds it's a fairly small program okay so we've now got that one actually installed back in down in the bottom there i can then just open that one up and you can see there it's a, just a zip file essentially with a whole lot of other Bit, different bits and pieces in there. Now, as far as the installation is concerned, it's literally just a matter of, of grabbing all of this stuff and moving it into your Dwarf Fortress environment. Uh, and so I'll show you how to do that. In fact, I'll show you what it says in terms of the, um, of the installation, just so you get a bit of a feel for it. So installing DF Hack, um, yeah, so basically it's sort of going through, uh, DF Hack only supports the SDL version of Dwarf Fortress. The legacy version will not work with DF Hack. So the SDL is the Steam version, essentially. Uh, the Windows build uh, should work under Wine in, in other operating, yeah, anyway, we won't worry about all that. So it's just gonna make it even more confusing. I shouldn't have bothered with that one down there. How to download, installing back in through this side. And it literally is just a matter of, of moving the files across. Actually, I shouldn't have even bothered with that. Forget, forget this, uh, this file because it's easier to do it than it is to read it and show, uh, like it's easier to show it and, and show the doing of it than to actually exp try to explain it th through text. So we don't need this open anymore. We're done with DF hack, the, this, the, uh, the, um, the, the documentation, but I would strongly suggest that you have a bit of a read through that because uh, there are some really good information in there. There's, it's more fleshed out than DF hack is within the program, but DF hack is actually fairly well documented even when it's within Dwarf Fortress. So we've got that now open. We need to now go and get our local files. So we're going to go and open up Steam, our Steam library. So we're just going to go back across. We're going to click on library. We're going to go down to Dwarf Fortress back in through here on the left hand side. We're going to right click on that one. We're going to go to manage and we're going to browse local files. Okay, so that then opens up another version. I can now ditch uh, the Steam version. So we now have our local files in here and then we have all of the DF hack stuff back in through this side. And all you do is you just literally grab all of this. So remember, you, you, the program is not running. Don't run Dwarf Fortress when, if you do, when you're doing this. So you're just gonna move that one across. Now I've already got like a, a heap of them in here. No worries, I'm just gonna do it anyway. It will then just move everything across eventually. 
And because I've got them all in there, it's just saying, do you want to replace the files in the destination? Why not? <laughs> we'll just do it. And they're all inside the uh, the file now. So they're now part of the actual inst install of Dwarf Fortress. When the new version of Dwarf Fortress comes in and, and installs itself over the top of the existing one, then it may not be operating. It's probably going to then... It, I think the one file that it does replace is one of these sdl.dll files. So it does replace this file here. The other the others are all unique, but I'm pretty sure that one there is the one file that gets replaced to then run DF hack. When your new version comes in, there's a high likelihood that that will then be replaced. And, um, and so you won't see the little DF hack in the corner, but don't worry, it will still be fine. The actual base game is not really a problem. It's just a DF hack just runs sort of next to Dwarf Fortress and just helps it along. So uh, it shouldn't be any real big problems. By the way, what I might just quickly do is show you how to quickly back up um, before you sort of, be, when you're going to run any of these sorts of things, there is a slight, slight chance that um, you may get some sort of corruption and you don't want to, of course, be, um, you know, losing save files. So what I what I do to actually go and do the um, like I'm, I'm still in here in my in my Steam area of Dwarf Fortress and the same way of you know going to browse local files. Go to the save area and just go to wherever like if you've named it or if it might be Region One or something like this. Like Region One will typically be where your file actually is. I'm just going to go into Region One and I'm then just going to scroll all the way to the bottom where it's got the world.dat file and that's the only thing that you need to actually save to actually have a backup. You can get rid of all this other stuff and still actually have it work. So you don't have to have the um, have all of this unit information. That can all be sort of just coming back out through the world.dat file. And so all you do, all I do here is I just go and right click, uh, sorry, I, click, I select it, then right click, and then just, I've just used 7-zip to archive it. But if you've got a, another program to archive, I just archive to uh, world.zip. So I just create like a, a version of world.zip. That's in through there. I might then re rename it to, uh, just so I've got it renamed to region one uh, world.zip. And so it's now just a, a zip file uh, ready ready to be used. And I, I will often for myself, I just go and go control X, or actually I'll just do it this way so you can see it. I'm going to then cut the actual file. I don't really need, it doesn't matter if it stays in there, but I'm just going to cut it out from there. And I'm, I've just created like a directory called archive. Uh, so I've just made a, a new directory and I'm just putting all of my zip files back in through there. So you can see I've got like a lot of them all sort of st stored in here. And in there I can just right, then right click and just go to paste. And there it is, region one uh, world.zip file is actually in that particular location. Now this is actually not anything I really particularly want, so I will just delete that. But that's a backup of the current Dwarf Fortress in region one. Uh, I'm actually using a different naming system for my files, but that's sort of how you then do a backup. So that can be um, important when you're sort of doing these extra things, just in just for extra safety. So that's a, that's a way just quickly to sort of do a backup. I'll just delete that one. Right, that's all we need to do. At that point, we can then go back in and start Dwarf Fortress. Now, depending on whether you've got Dwarf Fortress installed as a, um, like whether it be full screen or windowed full screen or however you might actually have it installed, it may be displaying on the on the actual um, desktop along with the um, the console version of, of DF Hack. So you can see there, it's basically, it's showing Dwarf Fortress.exe back in through here. And it's just sort of saying, loading the various, uh, the different hack scripts coming back into it. Uh, DF Hack is ready, have a nice day. This is DF Hack version, just giving us the version number, and then just type a question mark or help for general help, LS to see all the commands. Now you don't need to do that, but this is the old way. So the old, uh, the old players who used Dwarf, uh, Dwarf uh, DF Hack will be used to doing it through this sort of console, but you don't need to use it. But this can be quite useful if you need to have a reference somewhere else, like if you've got a second monitor or something, and you just need to just see what the what the help file is saying about a particular uh, area while you're doing something else. For example, if you use there's a program which I will show you pretty probably first actually called Stone Sense. And so if you're wanting to sort of know what the um, what the keyboard commands are for that one, you can actually have this uh, with the for example. I'll just do it right now. So I can just type in help Stone Sense in through here. And it will then give me the help files 
the help information of the application called StoneSense, which runs inside DF Hack. And you can see there's quite a lot. You know, like I wrote help StoneSense in there. It then gives me a lot of information. Now, I'm going to be showing this in the game itself. But even if I did help StoneSense with, from within the uh, Dwarf Fortress, it will still actually show in here as well. So you can then just go to all of the actual keyboard, uh, the keyboard commands, for example, put that onto a second monitor or somewhere off to the side so you can then sort of just think, okay, look, if I need to zoom in, um, zoom is uh, is the full stop. Okay, keys full stop, zoom out is comma. So you've got, you can sort of at least access it that way. But anyway, I'll go through, I, I won't reference this, but you can use this as a handy little reference if you're wanting to. Uh, let's go back to the game. So I'll just go back to Dwarf Fortress. Now I'm going to be opening up my current YouTube game. And so um, just so we can sort of then have something to sort of play with. So this is a little way ahead of where my current series actually is. So hopefully there won't be too many spoilers with what you can see in there. I want to focus on some specific things just so you get a bit of a feel for it. So let's just go back in. I'm just going to go to current game. I'm going to go back into here. I have already actually made a backup of this particular file just in case anything does go wrong. But um, I, I literally I have... I've, I've had crashes with Stone since, where it just has crashed out, but it has nothing has destroyed any files at this point in time. So uh, yes, there, so this the stability can be a little bit up and down. <laughs> anyway, let's just go to back to F1. This is the outside of the fortress, so I think we'll just sort of show. I'll show it started here because this is really the outside area, and uh, we can see there we've got a character out through here. This is a dwarven child called Rith, who is just hovering on the outside of the fortress at this point in time. So. What we have, end up having, I'll just get rid of all of this stuff in here so we don't have to worry about it. Um, I won't be uh, saving anything that I'm doing in through this side. So you can see in the top corner, I'll just try to get it where we can sort of see it uh, a little bit more clearly. See how it's got DF hack in the top corner there. And then it's got a, a few different commands when I hover over that one saying uh, like that you've got a, a GUI launcher, or a, a, a graphic user interface launcher, a quick save for your actual fortress. And if you go and hover over these, so the GUI launcher, and it's got the little help file there under, with the DF hack saying in-game uh, DF hack command launcher with integrated help. This is incredibly good. The game has never had this to this degree, to be honest, not that I can remember anyway with DF hack. I've always gone back out to the console, but you don't need to because you've got the console window now using this launcher. And to access this one, it's control shift D. And so I'll start to use that and I'll say control shift D whenever I do actually open it up, just so you get used to using those keyboard commands, but you can come in and just click on that one to bring up the actual command interface uh, for DF hack. But anyway, we won't, we won't worry about that one. Uh, quick save, you can see there, immediately save the game. Um, now, you don't really need that anymore because um, you've, like the, the actual game now does save very, very well on its own. Uh, so I don't know if I'd ever use quick save. Maybe I would. I'm not sure. Jewelry's out on that one for me. This is a virtual keyboard. So a virtual key keyboard for typing with the mouse if you need it. Um, if you're just using a normal computer, uh, then yeah, you shouldn't really have any sort of uh, any need for that, I don't think. I certainly don't have a need for that one through there. This is the minimal launcher. So an in-game DF hack command launcher with integrated help. This will be uh, different again. Like if we just go and have a look at minimal, we'll just go back and click on that one through there. Not even, I don't even know where it came up, to be honest. I can't even see it there. Oh, there it is at the top. Okay, so um, we'll just right click and move that one back out. So that was just a single line. Now I'm thinking that really in reality, you're gonna be wanting to have the uh, the GUI launcher from the top. So Control Shift D. This one here, sorry, the last one is uh, Quick Fort. Now these are using blueprints. I never ever use them. Um, I use I use macros, which I've already done in my um, in my Dwarf Fortress series. But I don't use uh, I don't actually use the blueprints as such. This is a way to have a fairly complex structure to your to your uh, fort if you wanted to have something that you just keep on loading in time and time again. Um, you sort of do it through, i would never done it, but I, th I think you just do it through, not Excel files, uh, common CSV files, I think, so that you can sort of structure out a, um, a grid pattern of how you want them to uh, to then build something. But anyway, that's, um, that's, again, something I've never, ever bothered with, so I'm not going to be covering it. <laughs> there is a question mark with the, with the quick start guide. So if I just go and either, if I click on that one or or just do question mark, you'll see that it's it just got the quick start guide with six pages got running through there. Just use the arrow keys to then sort of move through these 
uh, with each one of these. Okay, so that's just a bit of an overview of DF Hack. So it is sort of running. If you don't see that, then something went wrong with your install. So you just go back and just check to see what what actually may have happened there. So anyway, let's let's use uh, um, uh, Stone Sense. So you get a bit of a feel for it. Now Stone Sense, actually, I'll do it from here. So go Control Shift D, uh, which opens up the actual file itself. So if I start to type in, and this is one thing where you sort of have to sort of know what the command is that you want to be using. So as you get used to it, you will have your favorite commands. I'm just going to start typing in stone. And so you can see there that as I type, I'm getting, it, it, well, it goes back less and less. So when I've got just ST, these are all the different commands that have just got ST in there. If I do an O, the only one left in there is stone sense. I can then go and click on that one to open it up and it will then come back in through this other side, giving me information. This is the help file for StoneSense. If I wanted to, again, print it out to a degree, like on screen or back through the other application, I can do help StoneSense, and that way I can then sort of get, get, to get the, the same help file. Now, I'll talk a little bit about what all these different things actually have, just so you get a bit of a feel for how uh, DF hack operates. What it's got is it's got a whole lot of different tags. Now these aren't just for searching. These give you a, pr a parameter as to the scope of the individual application within DF hack. And so this is essentially going to be, um, and there is actually in the documentation, uh, full information about what the scope means for these for these tags, which is quite useful in different sorts of things. For example, there are, um, if I just go back out, I'll just talk about the tags a little bit. I'm pretty sure if I go to FPS, um, oh no, it's going to, it's got set FPS there. One of the, one of the commands is FPS. One of the tags is FPS. I thought it may sort of come up there and sort of show that one, but it's, um, but the, if it's, if it's got an FPS tag, it means that it's designed to help improve your frames per second which I've got it I've got displayed down the bottom through here but this if this starts to really slow down and grind it may be you may find some commands in here that will then sort of um, that will then help you to do things for example if I go to clean owned uh, that's for productive productivity items that's not it um, auto what else would there be uh, auto dump yeah so you can see that auto dump is a good one for frames per second so if you've got issues with certain aspects of your fortress this particular command will then have it will it will impact it can impact positively your frames per second uh, things for example like items this is going to be dealing with items within the fortress armok means that it basically is sort of fairly global i think that's sort of what that means armok is like the, the dwarf fortress god and so this is like a god mode type arrangement and then fort it's it's dealing with the um, inside the um the fort mode of Dwarf Fortress, not the Legends and not the uh, and not the Adventure mode, but some of things like, for example, Stone Sense. If we go back to Stone Sense and have a look at it, so Stone Sense again. Have a quick look at that one. We can see that this one works in both Adventure and Fort mode. Even though Adventure mode isn't ready yet for the Steam version, the uh, it's going to be coming at some point. And Stone Sense will work in that mode. It will work in the Fortress mode, which is what we're playing. Uh, it's purely for graphics and it's purely for maps. Is sort of what this is really all about. It then gives you a big information about how it then works. It's a 3D isometric visualizer and that's just the alias you can just type in s sense to actually also activate it but stone sense is probably the easiest way to do it and then you've got like very very detailed instructions on how to actually then run the program so let's have a look at this program i'll just go through a few of the little tool tips that you may want to do yourself so with that selected now this is the only program i've actually had a, had a look at in df hack that's not fully stable so hopefully we won't have any crashes i'm just going to press enter it then loads in the outside there's our child rith on the outside through here i'm just going to enlarge this just so it takes up the full screen and you can see it's actually just got like a small portion of my fortress it's not the full area that we actually sort of have now if i use the uh, the arrow keys and sort of move around you'll see that it then goes down to where we've got the frozen river that runs in through this side and again if i sort of just move around i can sort of just take like a bit of a a cross section now if i'm using it like this on a, on a larger screen if I press control and the right mouse button, see how it's now sort of moving and making the area bigger. 
it's actually pushing it out. I can go, so that's the, sorry, that was the down arrow. If I go the, the up arrow and press and control, it will go back the same way. Uh, if I do control and then the right arrow, it will expand the other side. So I can make it bigger or smaller, depending on what I want, just using the uh, control with the arrow keys. If I press control and then use the mouse wheel, it will then extend the Z levels that are displayed. Now, why would you need that, for example? If I just go back to sort of where it was showing, it was showing two Z levels. Um, if I scroll up, actually, if I scroll up, and so we sort of, and I'll just go back to where the fortress actually is, just so you sort of see where we where we were. So that's the top of the fortress. We're no longer seeing the ground. If I keep on going back up, we're just seeing the very, very top of the actual, of the, of the ramparts of the actual fortress, and we're not seeing anything else. If I use control and then just use my mouse wheel, I can then start to expose deeper and deeper down. So this one is now going through the full fortress up through here and extending down past the Z level. So just from, a, from an aesthetic visual sort of point, of point of view, you may want to do that. But anyway, I won't, I won't worry too much about that one. I'll just leave it where that one was. And uh, we'll just go through. And so what this one is, is a visualizer of your fort. And so what we can also then come back in and do is to zoom in. So we can use the full stop key to do a, a bit of a zoom in. You can zoom in a long way. So, but I won't worry about that. The comma key will then take you back out again. <laughs> but it's quite nice. It's quite a it's quite a nice way of just getting a bit of a feel for the fortress. And so this hasn't changed for quite some time. This has been like this for for a long time, actually. You know, with the way that we're, I've been playing in YouTube, so I don't think there's any spoilers out here at all. And then as I sort of start to come back down, we come. You know, we're just going to be clipping through each of these different areas now as we come down into this area this we've got some uh, some marks dwarves just uh, marching around this area there was some snow that fell into here before we could finish building it and so that snow is there permanently <laughs> we, we, we don't get rid of it i think there would be a df hack uh, command that would actually if we did need to clean that up but anyway it's um we do have snow so they just wait around in snow in this particular area it doesn't worry the dwarves uh we go back further down and then we sort of come back down into the bottom layers and then we start to go underground. This, here's our farmlands, um, some seed storage, and then we've got sort of like all sorts of different in, intricate things as we sort of come back down into the fortress itself. Uh, different trap layers, we sort of can see back in through there. Um, trap layers in through here as well. This is the water trap layer. Um, and deeper and deeper down into the actual fortress itself. So I'll just get it down to the, um, to, yeah, this is actually where we've got the main portion of the fortress. Uh, back in through this side. So this is actually where we first sort of started to build it. Now, sometimes it can be confusing seeing what's going on. So another command that may be useful is the, is the letter C. Just use the C command, and that will then shorten the actual, like it'll cut through the, uh, through the walls. And it, there's a, a cycle of different ways of displaying this one. So that's the first time I click on it. The second time doesn't actually bring it back. You can see how it's now sort of Put down, put the. It's made it lower when there's a creature on the other side. If I do it one more time, it will now show it. If there's furniture on the other side, it will then sort of only have the half areas, but have the full. If there's no furniture blocking anything, and then back again. It's, this is now going to sort of just block in the other bits and pieces back into here, and then back to the original again. So see, the first one is all of the all of the walls on that layer go down the second one is anything where there's a creature third one is anything where there's a creature or a um, or a, uh, um, a piece of furniture and then back in through this side again where it sort of then puts some of the other ones sort of back up again and then finish back again so just by pressing c this is a really fun way to just get a bit, bit of perspective about your fortress and so it's a it's a nice way of looking at the fortress anyway that's stone sets and, oh, and by the way, just to finish this one off, all I need to do here is just go and click on that one. And you'll sort of see there that um, it's gone, like when I actually, when I ran that one, I just did, uh, I just I just wrote Stone Sense, and then it came through and basically sort of loaded in the various scripts. Uh, Stone Sense was then launched. It just sort of goes through what version numbers we were using. So this is on, this is in the command window, not that you need to know about it. Uh, buffering, and then it's got the, and when we finished it down, stone sense was then shut down. So it just keeps track of what you're doing with the DF hack commands. So that was the first one. Oh, by the way, the game is still active. I just need to go there <laughs> and bring it back in. So I just right click to get rid of the window again, if I'm wanting to. Again, Control Shift D to bring other things in. Let's find some other problems in the fortress and just how we might sort of address them using DF Hack. 
All right, so this is a portion of the fortress where I've got like a, a intricate sort of trap, a drop trap essentially, where enemies will come along here. I've used this a lot in my YouTube uh, videos. And so they will walk along here, get sort of, uh, and then we pull the uh, the bridge away. They then fall down this, this uh, long area, this long drop into this bottom layer. But when we actually would channel everything out, there's a lot of rock that's been sort of just sitting around back in through here. And I would like to get rid of all of the actual rock itself. And so there's different ways you can do it in game. So one of the ways in game to do it, and I'll try to show you the in game and the out of game ways of actually addressing this, is that you would then go across into this um, designation menu down through here and open this one up and then just go into hide an item. So we can sort of go through and decide, okay, I'm going to hide all those rocks just so they don't appear. And then when I right click and get out of that one, they're hidden. They're still sitting there and they can still be used. You just don't get to see them. It just cleans up the fortress. So that's one way of actually cleaning things up without using DF hack. I'll just go back in and, uh, and designate those to sort of come back in. The other way is to dump the items, which is what I tend to do anyway. I try to then allocate and say, okay, look, I'm gonna dump all of these different rocks and we're gonna I'm gonna create like a, a dump zone for them to go into like a, a trash area or a, gar a garbage area, and they will then be dumped out of an area just to just to neaten it up. So I tend to do that an awful lot in the fortress. And so if I just go back across, I will just dump all of this stuff. Uh, we'll clean it up. So we'll we'll leave the the stuff that that should be picked up, and I'll just go back through and um, and grab the rest of the stuff. There's probably more in here than what I. I'm really going to be getting so I'll just go and select all of this for dumping and so I'm going to now use DF hack rather than having my dwarves coming down to uh, to try to get the dumping and dumping elements now if I, this some people consider this to be a an exploit I do it with things that I'm just trying to clean the fortress up it will impact by by dumping certain items it will impact your um, your frame rate in a positive way potentially this probably not so much because they're not really doing much but if you've got like a lot of clothing that's um, that's 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 damaged and just sort of floating around in the fortress you can actually destroy it in one go you can actually designate it for dumping and then delete it there's a few different things we can do with this though like even if I don't want to be cheating um, if I have all these things designated for dumping and just unpause just for a second what will end up happening is all of those things will end up in my tasks menu and so we'll end up with um, it'll only show a few at a time but this is not prioritized and so one way we can do it if we don't want to cheat is to prioritize the dumping of the items. And so we can go across one of the, um, if we just go control shift D again to open this one up. And so if we have a look, if I just start typing in, I think it's just called prioritized. Yep, so we've got prioritized back in through here. So this command, I can sort of say, okay, look, prioritize. Um, we've got the different sorts of things in through here. Again, this is useful in the fort fortification mode. It automates different sorts of things and it relates to the jobs area of uh, Dwarf Fortress. Uh, automatically boosts the priority of selected job types. And so with the usage is to have priority with any options that you sort of then need to actually have on. And it will give different examples, like it's just got prioritized, print out what job types are being automatically prioritized and how many jobs. So this will just give you a summary. Uh, we've got a prioritize a default, so prioritize the default set of job types that the community has suggested and play tested. So that's going to be information that other players have, have sort of designated would be uh, would be good. Uh, prioritize hyphen J, print out the, the list of active jobs that you can prioritize right now. Let's just do that one. So I've got prioritize and then I'm just going to go space and then hyphen and then J and uh, just go enter. And so we can see there the current jobs that we actually have are um, uh, carved down staircase. We've got two of those, three digs, uh, uh, plants. Actually, we're not seeing the one there yet for the dumping of the items. Anyway, let's just go back to prioritize again. So we'll just uh, prior prioritize. And um, but that can give you a list of the actual jobs, so you can actually sort of go in and designate those. If we go to prioritize A, let's have a look and see what that one does. Uh, it's, there's no jobs actually in here at this point in time. Okay, so we'll just type that one again. Prioritize. Now, there'll be other examples. So for example, if you, J is a shortcut for jobs, you've got um, delete, so uh, stop automatically prioritizing new jobs of specified job types, uh, which can be useful just to reset it back again. Um, <coughs> 
actually hyphen R, print out the full list of valid job types. Let's just have a look at that one. I don't use this actually. This is the different ones we can actually then go and use. So we can, if we wanted to, go back in. Now what we're looking through here is actually the way of dump, dump item. So dump item would be the one that we're trying to prioritize in this, in this particular one. Let's go back to prioritize again. And uh, so the usage there, so that's, that's actually quite useful, the hyphen R. Uh, which job type should I prioritize? So it just goes through information and um, and so a default list of job types to prioritize. So it's got things, for example, like um, the community has assembled a good uh, good default list of job types that most players will benefit from. They've been play tested across a wide variety of forts types. I hope I'm, am I in the way of those? I am a bit actually, sorry guys. I'll just put it down below where my head is. Um, and so, um, uh, on, so add an on new fortress prioritize AQ defaults. Well, then sort of get that list automatically. But I'm just, I'm not going to show you that as such. But this, this, what this means is that whenever you start a new fortress, it will automatically then prioritize the default set that the community has said would be good. So by all means, play with this stuff if you're wanting to. But I'm not going to worry about that one through there. So that, that will then load it into the initialization files for DF hack. Um, anyway, I'm just going to go yeah, dumping items, pulling levers, felling trees and other tasks. So that's actually, it's, um, it is important to sort of get those things. So if we go to, it was dump items was the actual one that we had, was the one that we wanted to sort of use. And so with the, there's usually a good set of examples, but I'm not actually seeing good examples with this one at this point in time. So I'll just go prioritize. Then the options are going to be dump items. So, um, so prioritize dump items. And so uh, it's going to be ignoring uh, unknown type dump items. Actually, was it dump item? Yeah, okay, I did the wrong. I do this a lot, sorry. Prioritize dump item. Ah, oh, that's still wrong. <laughs> I still did it incorrectly. Oh my God, here we go. Prioritize hyphen R. What was it? Oh, must it's actually capitalization is important sorry guys it's uh, it was dump uh, capital D ca capital I so prioritize and I'm you probably sort of thinking oh this is all, all too hard <laughs> dump item okay so bang in she goes and there we go so we've prioritized dump item and uh, if we go back to our um, if we sort of let the game then run forward, we should sort of then find that that will then be prioritized. Um, so I'll just I'll let it run forward a little bit. Let's have a look. You see our FPS is actually not at the full 100 and then 50 that it normally would be. And we have a bit of a look down. Actually, it's still in there, but certain people are now coming back in to do the dumping of these items. So these items are now being given priority. And so we've got like a lot of dwarves coming in to actually dump those items. Now, I don't really want them to do that. So what we'll do is we'll go and use another uh, thing. So the prioritize is a good one if you're wanting to just tweak what is more important for your dwarves? So I won't go into any more. You can read the, the help files for that one, but that is a good one uh, if you're not wanting to actually sort of hack the game or sort of exploit the game. But we're going to exploit the game because I like the one I really, really like is one called Auto Dump. And so they haven't come into here just yet to do this one. Um, so may, actually maybe it wasn't even prioritized properly at that point in time. What I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go across to where my, um, to where my, um, what is it, the, um, uh, where I've got my, my uh, areas for rocks. And so I'm going to have like a stone stockpile in through this side. I'll just go into this area. Like if I just go across and get any of the designation menus. So if I use, for example, even this one in here, see how it's got like a, a designation. Now this is not by default. By default, the game shows you this, which won't then work with what I'm going to show you. So I'll put it back to the way it currently is, and then I'll go through in detail what to do. So the default, if we return to the game, if I go to any of the things that use any sort of designation, which could be mining, could be uh, could be uh, chopping down of trees, all of these things are designation. We end up with a grid system on the actual map itself, including this one back and through here. So either one, any one of these is sort of doable to then bring up the designation mode. But if we're not seeing the cursor in the middle of the screen, it means we're not actually 
we don't actually have a, a, a cursor on screen, which means we can't use this next command. We have to have the cursor. So to do that, you go to your gearbox up there with the gears back up and through this side. You then go down to settings in through here. And you can leave these on all the time, by the way, when you sort of got them done. You go across to game and then near towards the end of this particular screen, you'll see keyboard cursor enabled. Just go yes. That will then put the keyboard cursor on the screen. This is also very useful if you're doing macros. So just click on done. And it, it's not gonna get in your way if it's, if, it's, if it's there. So we now just return to the game. And if I now go to designation, we'll now see that there's actually a keyboard cursor there. Now we control this either through the arrow keys or through your numpad uh, numbers. So I'm just gonna use, for example, eight will then move it up, six will then move it across. Let's just put this little keyboard cursor right in here. And we're now going to go across, go Control Shift D, open up this one, and we're just going to write, we're going to use one called Auto Dump. So if I just do Auto, there's a lot of good auto stuff in here, by the way, and you may, I'll go through a few of these. So Auto Dump is the one we want to be using. And so there's a few different ways to use it. The way I just use it is just the default, which is literally just Auto Dump. But you can go and go uh, Auto Dump Destroy here. So an alias, uh, so this is uh, intended use, for, uh, hang on, where is that one? Destroy, instead of dumping, it destroys anything you've got. So if you've got clothing that is old and you just want to get rid of it, it sort of be, would be like dumping it into an Atom Smasher and then using an Atom Smasher. You can do the full destroy right away if you've got things that you're wanting to dump and get rid of completely. Um, in this case, I really just want to go through and just dump the items at this location. So I'm just going to go auto dump, just press enter in this instance. So I don't want to destroy these because I want to make use of the rock. But if there was old clothing and I just wanted to get rid of it, I didn't want to sell it, do anything like that, bang. I just do that one. Oh, here we go. We've got a, a could not could not move item. So there's a whole lot we couldn't actually move. So there's a, a fair bit there that was actually um, forbidden. So we couldn't actually, for, like uh, forbidden for us to actually access. But we actually had a lot that were, actually what these are, these aren't forbidden. These were designated by the um, by the game to be picked up and then dumped by the game. So this is actually the ones that the actual individuals were going to go and pick up. So that's what's happening in here, in through here. So these have been tasked, but 122 still got quick dumped. And so if we just right click, we can now see directly underneath through there, we actually do have the, um, the all of the different uh, stuff that was actually then brought in into that particular environment. We can see them all sort of sitting in through there. And so in this instance, what I can then do is Again, with this one selected, so with that selected with the claim, I can then still just use my uh, my um, my mouse to just go and claim these different sorts of things. And so that's now all usable again. So uh, very, very quickly, we've sort of now been able to sort of fix things up. But quite often you'll find that if you do actually have, I'll try to see if I can find anything where we've actually got um, a bedroom layer that we need to sort of try to fix up. So let's just say, for example, when we see these, see how the giant uh, cave silk trousers have got like a little X next to them? This means that they're old, and so they're not re they're, they're becoming worn, and they're not great. They're still good value. Now, normally it would go through to X, double X, and then a capital X, and then a cap two capital Xs. So these are just all old, worn clothes where they've just sort of left them. Now, what I should do to fix this up is to actually have them... Um, in, in cabinets. I should actually give them not just a chest, but also a, a cabinet in their rooms. So that would then sort of fix that one. So that would be how to sort of fix that one in game. But if I've got this sort of stuff, what I can do here is I can go to my dump zones. So I can just go back across, uh, back into here, go to dump. And so just as, as an example, like if I just go and, and select all of these clothes and just say we've sort of, we don't want them anymore. We'll just dump those. Um, by the way, if I go over the top of furniture, it will it, the furniture will be designated for dumping, but won't be dumpable. But if I then undo the the construction of it, it will then be dumped. So it still is actually, I'll show you in just a minute, but if I just grab a few of those sorts of things, I'll just go back to the designation. I'll just move it any old place. It's not really gonna matter where we go. I'm just gonna get rid of these things. So I'm gonna designate it for dumping in through there. Control Shift D, auto dump. So you start typing it. Uh, so we end up with it, auto dump back over this side. And I'm now going to do space, and then I'm going to write the word destroy. And so it's now going to destroy those items and dump them. 
done. So 35 items marked for destruction. And so that's actually now been done. Uh, if we then go have a bit of a look, they've now all gone. They're out of the fortress. And that's going to then start to improve our frames per second. So that's how we then use auto dump with destroy. I hardly ever use it, to be honest. Um, I would tend to, if I was going to do that, I would tend to still put them somewhere just so I can sort through it and then uh, use an atom smasher or something to get rid of it. But you can do it that way. Now, I did mention about some of the beds and things being designated for uh, dumping. That one seems to be OK. This one here is designated for dumping. If we pulled this apart, which you wouldn't do, but if you did, then the bed would be dumped. So you can just go back in through and, and essentially once you've done all that, you can just go back into here and go in to remove the dumping designation and just go that way. And that way you'll sort of just fix it all up. So that's just a little way of just cleaning up after you've been there. All right, that's uh, that's the auto dump. Uh, let's go to another one. Um, so the auto dump is one that I use all the time just to clean up the fortress. And as I say, some people see that as an exploit, but I actually just think it's cleaning up because at the end of the day, you're going to have more rock than you can then you know what to do with. So uh, I don't mind actually moving the rock into those different areas. I wouldn't do it with something that was in a dangerous area that I'm trying to go and save. I do consider that to be an exploit personally, but you play the game your way. So just don't worry about, you know, if other people sort of are, are concerned about what's happening. So you can see in through here, these rocks, I would, I would tend to I would tend to auto dump all of these and just have them automatically then moved into the stone stockpile just to clean it right up. OK, so that's the uh, that's auto dump. Let's talk about uh, actually I know what we should talk about. All right, so if we have a look at this one, you can see that we've got like multiple uh, like gobblers and pults in through this side. We've got so many different sorts of animals. There's a single one there, double pults in through there. We've got a real turkey plosion, or the, the cat cat plosion is actually what they call, refer to it in uh, Dwarf Fortress, where you've got so many of one type of animal that it's uh, it you know to get around this, the only way that you really would be able to then work with this one would be, be would be to go into your um, into your citizen menus and then go to pets and livestock, and then just go through and start to go and find all of the various. Um, like I've got so many rabbits and things like this as well. I just got heaps and heaps and heaps of them. Like there's just heaps and heaps of them around. Uh, so if we go back into the, all these different pots, you would then have to go through and actually toggle them ready for butchering. So that can take an awfully long time to do. This will also then impact your frame rates as well. So if we just go and right click on that one, we can use DF hack to do this automatically for us, which is a really, really cool command. And so I'm just going to go Control Shift D. And uh, with this time, we're going to type in auto again. So auto. And you can see there we've got one called auto butcher. And then we've got a GUI auto butcher as well. But we'll start with auto butcher and have a bit of a look at this one. And there's some good examples as to how this one then does sort of then work. And so the usage is enable auto butcher. So start processing livestock according to the configuration. Note that no races are watched by default. You have to add the ones you want to monitor with auto butcher watch, uh, auto butcher target, or auto butcher auto watch and so I'll go through how these actually then do go and work uh, and so if we go to um, uh, the auto actually I'll, I'll have a quick read through and the auto automatically add all, all new races animals you buy from merchants yourself etc through the watch list using the default target counts what this is it, it creates a target count of um, of child uh, females and child male animals of a, of a particular species and uh, they call it races in here but it is species essentially would probably be the more correct term and then you've got adults female and male as well so for the turkeys for example the female turkeys the adult female turkeys will um, will end up uh, uh, growing uh, like having eggs and so i just need to really maintain like enough enough of the turkeys to lay eggs for our fortress to eat and also to have like a little bit of a production there of um, of the of the pulse coming through every so often as well, just so that they've got some that are hatching. But I don't need a mountain of them, which is what I've got at the moment. And the pigs are the same. So we've got different sorts of things in through there. Now we're going to be using a um, this auto butcher target in through in through this side. And so we're going to be going through. This is the female kids, the male kids, the female adults, and the male adults. And you've got like all new and then whatever race it might actually be. So in this case, we're going to be using the race. And the race we're going to use, there is actually an example down through here. Again, this is, um, these have to be done in uh, like the, the upper and lower case is important. And so it's going to be bird underscore turkey. To get the actual list of, um, of t different types, you then can go through and it does tell you in here somewhere. Um, 
yep, to see a list of all races, run this command. It's quite a complex command, so I won't actually go through and um, and show that command, but that one will give you all the different sorts of ca characters or races in the game. But the, the main one that we're going to be using is going to be uh, pig and bird turkey in this case, or I can just have any any of them by default and with a few overrides, which is probably going to be a, a good way for us to go. And so I'll just go through and how to set this one up. This is this is useful if you've got like what I, the problem I've got right now, which is having a lot of animals that are that are um, you know that need to be culled down, and I don't want to be going through and sort of manually sorting that that was this one out. So what we're going to do is we're going to pretty much just run this particular command like auto butcher target, and they've got four three two one with uh, bird turkey as the actual command itself. So we can enable a butcher, like the auto butcher, so we can sort of get that one working. I'm pretty sure I can actually get this one off its on its own anyway and then enable it. So let's just do that one through there. We'll just do the target one first. So we're going to go and we're going to set up the targets for the turkey. So target. Now the first one, as we sort of saw with this, if we have a bit of a look at it, uh, female kids. Now I'm thinking I'm going to keep 10 uh, female kids. Uh, Pults, so ten. I only want one gobbler. I just want a spare gobbler, just in case something happens to the the adult gobbler. I'm going to have ten layers, so ten female adults with one gobbler. So ten, one, ten, one, and then I have to designate what species we're using. And this is going to be, if we have a look down at this particular example, which is exactly what I want to have a look at. Bird underscore turkey in capitals. It is important for all of this uh, turkey. That's it. So auto butcher target. So command finished successfully. So that's now been put into the commands, but we need to enable auto butcher to get it to run. So we'll just go back to enable and then auto butcher into there. Okay, so it's got enable and whatever plugin you need to sort of get it, you can get it running. So we'll just go that way. So um, the command finished successfully. So auto butcher is now running. We can now go to the uh, GUI interface and through this side. So let's just go and click on that one. And so again, this one is going to, this will impact the frames per second ultimately because you're going to be getting rid of items, like, you know, getting rid of entities from the actual map itself. And so we're just going to go across and just press enter. This will then open up what we've actually now got selected. And so we've got um, all races plus new ones. So this, if we do the all, um, we can then sort of have anything coming uh, coming into the fortress, like where it will allow five female kids, one male uh, kid, five female adults, and one male adult. So, for example, if we had water buffaloes, um, it would be a five one five one ratio. In the case of what we've got, we've actually got 37 turkeys and we only want 10 of them. 37 male turkeys, we only want one of the, sorry, we want 10 of the females, one of the males. Now we've only got four of the female adults, so they're only just growing up at this point in time. And so we, we, we'll, we'll be wanting more of those. And we've got two male uh, turkeys. And so in this case, we'll be wanting to get rid of, that, what, rid of one of those as well. Now that's the, um, so that's the first one. Let's just go and add another one in. We'll just go and right click just go control shift D again and just go across to uh, auto butcher. And again, as soon as I type the command, it's then ready to sort of tell us what's going on. And if I now just do um, target again, so target, and in this case, I'm going to do pig. So I'm going to do, um, I will do five, one, five, one. So I'll sort of just do the default and just pig, which is just going to be no pigs. It's just PIG and go enter. And so that command is now finished. If we now go back to the GUI for auto butcher again and run that one, we now see that we've actually got uh, like we've got um, eight male adults in the fortress, like hovering in and around here, which we don't need. Uh, one of them, you can see there, it's got like a, a an orange next to one of them. That's because one of them is actually a pet. And so we would never ever kill a named creature. So if we name a creature, it's always going to be then sort of just secure and safe. And so that's, that's what that little symbol is in through there. So it's going to watch, but it's going to do it after about eight days, so 6,000 ticks. So we need to sort of get the, um, we need to stop the sleep or, or move the sleep. So we can sort of, if we can just start, W is going to start the auto watch. Um, I think toggle watch, if we just go W, I think this will then start the watch. Uh, it didn't actually seem to sort of then work. I'm not, it's not showing us there. Um, I don't want to wait the eight days. <laughs> 
<laughs> but anyway, it is sort of set up and ready to go. Uh, if I just go back across, I don't think it's going to be automatically set for butchering. We should see it come in here if there if there is. Okay, we'll go back now. That I've, yeah, I'll, see, I'll just see if I can figure out how to actually get it so that it does actually activate, so that they start to then say, okay, butcher this one, this one, this one, this one. So if we just go Control Shift D, and then Auto Butcher, <clears throat> there is one of them that actually does automatically uh, send it across, change the number of ticks between scanning cycles. I will allow it to still keep this the default. Uh, watch or start watching the list of races. Um, if they aren't already in your watch list, uh, so they'll be added. So we've already got them. They're already being watched, but are they been? Have they actually been designated? I mean, they're already they're already in there. I think we still have to wait for these for the actual auto butcher. Um, auto auto watches is going to get all the animals essentially in the in the fa in the fortress, which w still wouldn't be bad, except for the ones that we designate as, as being separate. So that actually still wouldn't be bad, like auto butcher auto watch. We might just do that one as well. Come on, finish successfully. If we now just go to the GUI in through this side, have another look. Um, that should be now under watch. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, we can stop the auto butcher. It should be, it's, not, it's, not, it's just not quite working. I'll just try the uh, ticks one and just make it into a, a small number, like 10 or something like that. So ticks, and uh, I'll just make it 10 rather than 6,000. Um, so that's now been designated. If we just go back to the GUI, and have another look. I'm still saying yes there. Hmm. It may not be enough. Anyway, it will eventually pick it up. If you get the idea anyway, it'll then start to doing the, the auto butchering. We have a similar thing for trees as well. So um, I will just, actually, we'll just go back out just in case that's sort of uh, doing things. So Control Shift D, uh, auto butcher. I'll just make it 6,000 again, just so it's not going to keep on doing it. All right. Um, yep, that's okay. All right, so that's all done. Um, right, so trees. Now, again, I don't really ever use this command very much, but if we go back up the top, if I just press F1, uh, we should sort of then have a designation where, actually, if we go to F3 and then go down one, actually, I've got enough wood in here anyway, but we can use, and I, I won't issue the command, but I'll just show you sort of how it then does work. So Control Shift D, and then if we just start typing in auto, we then have auto chop. And so what this one does is it auto harvest trees with uh, uh, when low on stockpiled logs. And so it'll automatically then just go and say, okay, we're running out of logs, go and, go and chop down some trees. So enable auto chop. So we need to do the same sort of thing in through here. And then we have different sorts of things of, of designating them if we wanted to, the targets. I think by default, all we have to do is just go enable auto chop and that would be pretty much it. Um, there is, is there a GUI for that one? No, there's not because it is just fairly, oh yes, there is. There's a, a GUI auto chop uh, command in through this side. Let's just enable it. So we have to first of all run the enable auto chop. Okay, so um, that's now running. And then we'll just go to uh, GUI for auto chop and enter. And so um, we can designate it by burrow or like the burrow that we have is fortress. So we can actually sort of then go and designate a burrow outside of the areas where we can then sort of go and have them chop down trees when required. And so it'll then just go usable logs in the stock is 121. So it's under what we needed. Approximate logs left of accessible trees is 9,321. Total trees that designated is one at this point in time. Approximate logs from designated trees is going to be three. So we can sort of get a feel for, again, the information of what's actually coming back in through there. So total, uh, total trees harvested so far is 166 which will of course impact what happens with the uh, with the um, uh, with the elves so we would need to then go and set up I think uh, we'll chop any accessible trees on the map hide burrows with no trees is off designate trees for chopping now so if I go control D so we we'll just go control D 
And so it's now designated 80 trees for chopping. So it's fairly simple the way it sort of does work. Oh, sorry, 12 trees for chopping, which will then give us the 80 required to take us over the 200. So there we go. So that's it. That's the auto chop, nice and simple. And so if we go back up top again and have another look, we should start to see some trees. I hope it's up here and not in other layers. It looks like it may be in other layers. I'm not sure where the actual trees are designated for chopping. Anyway, they've been designated somewhere on the map. It could be could be down below somewhere, I'm guessing. Actually, that's probably what it is. If we just go back down to F2, have a bit of a look around in here. No, it's not out here either. Hmm, I wonder where it is. I am unsure. Anyway, it's uh, somewhere on the map. There will be a designation. I'll just let it run forward a little bit. Probably won't have access to it. Uh, there's all the dump items again. So I've sort of I'm leaving everything in here at this point in time. Operate. Now we're not seeing the actual. Uh, it's not. It hasn't caught up with itself just yet. We'll leave that one where that actually is. Okay. So that's the. Um, that's where we are with the. Um, uh, with the auto chop. Uh, what other commands are worth showing? Now I'm an hour in already. Wow. I was an hour in, and we're really only just touching the surface here. Um, a few that are useful, like die will then just is a quick way to, to just destroy the game and basically sort of get it so that it can, everything just shuts straight down. So often if you're having troubles with the game, rather than actually going out slowly, you can just do a die command and that will then kill it all off. Uh, reveal is interesting if you're trying to then sort of figure out where things actually are. I won't show that. That's fairly exploitive. Um, that way you can sort of get and have a look to see where every single vein of um, of metal might be in the fortress and things like that. There was another command, which I don't think is in here just yet, where you could actually then get like a, a list of all the different minerals uh, in the actual fortification. You'd start off with the reveal command and then you would actually then use this, um, it would give you a summary. I don't know if you would have thought it would have been in here by now, to be honest, but it wasn't the last time I looked. And I forget what it's actually called. This is it, I think, locate ore. So locate ore, and then you can just do like a list. And if we have a look at that one through there, you can see there, it's just showing actually the, what we've actually discovered already. But there is actually another way of actually getting it, like the actual numbers of uh, that you've actually got, and this isn't it. So it wasn't locate ore. But that is still useful just to get a quick summary of the actual ore that you actually have. Look, I won't get too caught up with a lot of these, there's so many good things in here. So just, just start to sort of click around and sort of see, okay, what does teleport do? This tool teleports any unit friendly or hostile to somewhere else in the map. So there's all these different exploits and a lot of these are exploitive, but um, they're fun. You know, like if you're wanting to sort of use them, things like Seed Watch, for example, will allow you to auto manage your seed usage, whether you're gonna cook them or not. Uh, so there's a whole lot of these little helpers. Uh, one thing you may wanna to start to type in is fix. Often there's little bugs in the game. And so if you type in the word fix, you'll then sort of see like fixed dead units, for example. Let's have a look at this one here, because in this particular fort, this is actually an instance where we've got like a lot of dead creatures that we're keeping track of that we don't need to keep track of. Like if we have a look and see our dead creatures, if we go back into here and go to dead and missing, you can see I've just got squillions and squillions of them in through this side. It's I'm um, not sure how many we actually even have there, to be honest. There's, there's just so many. I just don't need to know because we've had so much death and destruction on this particular map. And so if I go back into uh, DF hack again, so control shift D and then just go into fix and then dead units and just go in and select that one through there. This is gonna remove dead units from the list so migrants can arrive again. And so because the more that you fill up the dead units list, particularly with your own sort of dwarves and things, um, it's gonna stop migrants from coming because they're keeping track of them. It still goes against the actual total number. And so uh, if so many units have died at your fort that your dead units um, exceed about 3000, which we know near that one, migrant waves can stop coming. So this uh, fix removes uh, uninteresting units like slaughtered animals and nameless goblins from the unit list allowing migrants to start coming again. It still just cleans out the list. So if we just go and do that one, enter. And so it, yeah, units removed from the active list was 502 units, <laughs> which makes it a nice controllable little list again. So we go to dead and missing. We now have a much, much smaller list of, uh, of units. 
and ones that are, are important to us, not just the, um, not just all of the various. Like these are all the people who died outside, of course, still. But it's uh, it's a meaningful list now, and so that's also then going to make the game run a little bit faster. That's one of the uh, what's one of the the, the things. Control Shift D. Uh, just type in fix. What else have we got in the fixes? Uh, blood delete. So this one here will uh, remove uh, un unusable liquids from caravan manifests. So if there's things that we just aren't going to be needing, not, I wouldn't worry about that one so much. Drop webs, like sometimes there'll be webs caught in different things in the game. This one can be used. Again, if there's none, if I just do it, I'm, I'm assuming there'll be none in this one. Uh, actually, no, it's 27s that were uh, project uh, projectilized. And so what happened in through here is I had webs that were just stuck. They weren't able to be used, but they were still in the fortress and they were just using up space. That's now fixed up 27 of them, so why not? I wasn't even aware of it. Fix, what else have we got? We've got... Um, Dry buckets. This is if you if the um, if the dwarves, particularly in the hospital layers, will start to use buckets but don't finish off using them, they then become unusable. So if we go to dry buckets, so allow discarded water buckets to be used again. Just go enter. And we had eight buckets in that category. Wow, this is actually this is this is good stuff. Uh, just type in fix again. What else have we got? Uh, stable temperature. This is if you've got like something where the game is trying to keep track of um, of what it thinks will be uh, temperature changes, particularly with magma or something like this. If I just go that way, I, I think that that will then what it does. So Sol's FPS issues are caused by fluctuating temperatures. We should be okay with this, I think. Um, use fixed. Um, so. Yep, items not in equilibrium. Okay, there's a lot there. And again, that's going to then impact our, our frames per second. So that was good. Uh, what else have we got in our fixes? So fix, and then we've got stuck doors. So if we've got any doors not stuck open with items we can see, but sometimes doors just get stuck for no good reason. It's like a bit of a bug. So let's just go to stuck doors, press enter. And there were none of those. So we had none of those in the fortress. But you know, if you do, then at least that will then fix it. So they're the fixes for things that the game is struggling with or can struggle with. Now that's going to then impact my FPS. It's now the FPS has come up anyway with all the stuff that we've been doing. But these all help, you know, they like they're not all exploitive. <laughs> but they're there are like you've got things like full heal of course, which would then fully heal a particular unit. Uh, so you do have exploits in through here as well. Nest boxes you can actually have so protect fertile eggs incubating in a nest box. So if a if you are trying to develop like a a turkey farm or a chicken farm or something, you can actually just run nest boxes and that way it will then, so enable nest boxes, will then just enable to protect the nest boxes if they are fertile eggs. Otherwise the dwarves will, if they're not fertile, the dwarves will just eat them. So there's just all these little helpers all the way through. Anyway, I've gone for well over an hour now, or not well over an hour, but I've gone over an hour uh, and there's a lot to look at. So I would suggest just going and clicking and just sort of seeing what every single little thing in through here, like warn if, if there's, if any of your dwarves are starving, there's just so much good stuff in here. There really is. Liquids, um, you know, place magma, water, or obsidian anywhere that you like. So you can sort of do things with that one. It's just heaps and heaps. But anyway, it's uh, I'll, I'll let you guys sort of uh, figure things out. Actually, there's a few things like clear webs. This one will uh, remove all the webs from the map if you if you need to do that one. There's a few like this as well. Ban cooking is a good one. Like if we go to ban cooking, I should actually talk about this one. And so what ban cooking will then do is if, if like at the moment when you're playing the game, if you need tallow for soap, for example, and you've got to watch, you've got to butcher an animal then watch for, for the fats to then be rendered into tallow and then stop them from cooking the tallow. It's be, it's quite confusing. Let's have a look and see if we can sort of see if we've got any tallow. I think I've already banned a little bit of it. So if we go across into our labors menu and go across into the kitchen and then we'll go across into um, meat, fish and others, I can then stop if there's a certain element that I want to stop See yak, yak tallow down through here. I did manage to stop it because um, I waited for it to be butchered and then went in and actually then undid the cooking of it. Now, if what we can do for for our for what we actually have, sorry, just went down a different way. I'll just go to the kitchen layer, which is up, I think. And so in this instance with the kitchens, uh, if I want to make sure that all no tallow is used, because it really tallow is you really want to be using that for soap no matter what. And so you can control shift D, bring up this one through here. And that was going to be ban cooking. So uh, I'll just type in ban and then 
click on that one through there and it just gives me an indication as to what I can actually then go and do so I can just go across and go bang cooking tallow and bang all of that tallow now has been banned all the way through so any tallow that comes up is now banned in my fortress so we won't cook any tallow whatsoever and I can do that with all sorts of different things as well with the bang cooking so um, Band cooking back and through this side. Again, it just gives you a bit of a uh, an, uh, an idea. Like if you don't want them to use any of the actual booze, if you don't want them to use brews, uh, fruit or honey, milk, mill, oil, seeds, etc. Tallow, thread. These are all the different things that the that they can use in their cooking, and you can just basically have them so that it stops. So you can actually just do a a, uh, a ban cooking all to stop all of it, or specific elements like the tallow. Tallow is an important one to sort of stop. Uh, and actually the seeds as well, to be honest. Um, Been cooking space seeds. There we are. And so it's now just going through the various sort of seeds that we actually had in through there as well. And so... Um, Actually, that's probably, I think I've already banned a lot of the other ones anyway at this point in time, but that can be useful just to sort of stop them from, and I think um, brew, um, yeah, I think brew is another one as well. Like so probably even just ban cooking all would actually be um, uh, ban cooking. Then if I just do all, it's then just going through all of the different fruit that's going to be banned from cooking, uh, the different drinks that are going to be then banned as well, the different milks, etc., etc. So it'll just go through the full, full list, which is, um, it just means you don't have to think about it. So that's another useful one. All right, so now we're still going to, I still want to talk about Dwarf Therapist. So we're well over an hour in, and so let's just go to Dwarf Therapist now and talk about that. This is different to DF Hack. DF Hack is going to have like a lot of different applications inside it, or, you know, like little sort of, um, yeah, well, I guess they are little applications, really. They just sort of help the running of the fortress. Um, so I don't think there's anything else I really needed to actually go and show. I think we've sort of done a lot of the important ones there. Uh, we can go to show mood if you're if you're struggling trying to find what's required by like if somebody has got a strange mood and I don't have anyone with a strange mood in the fortress. But if we did, we could actually then go and make use of that. Now, DF, uh, sorry, let's just now go and switch across to Dwarf Therapist anyway. So I can't actually show the um, that one through there. A lot of these auto ones are worth having a look at as well. So this will automatically manage the the farm crop selection for you. You don't have to then worry about it. Again, there's just so much to look at and through this side. Anyway, I'll let you look at it yourself and uh, we'll come back and look at, um, at Dwarf Therapist. Sorry, I'm all over the place at this point in time. So just going to right click. Now, Dwarf Therapist runs separately. DF Hack runs alongside Dwarf Fortress and so does Dwarf Therapist to a degree. But it's And it does have to have an active version of Dwarf F Fortress running to be able to then read what's currently in the, in the actual in, in memory. And so... To do that, let's just go and download it and get that one running. Okay, so this can be another one of these slightly confusing sort of which one do you choose and which one do you go for. Now, we know that the version of Dwarf Fortress that we're using is version 50 at this point in time. So keep that in mind. So just be aware that the, the 50 is the important number. Uh, if we do a search for GitHub Dwarf Therapist Steam Download or just even just uh, GitHub Dwarf Therapist, we should end up with the Dwarf Therapist GitHub repository. Now, this will actually have a combination of the Steam version and the old version of the uh, of this particular program. So we need to actually make sure that we get the Steam version to, for use with Steam. But this is still the best place to go for it, even though it's a little bit confusing, but hopefully you'll, this will make sense. So as we go through the various number iterations, if you're watching this uh, in the future, uh, from the time of recording, uh, the, the number may be different. So we may be beyond version 50 of the game. And so it may be sort of like, you know, version 51 or 52, 53, whatever it might be. There should be a dwarf therapist that relates to that particular version of the game. So let's just go into the GitHub repository, uh, back in through here. Now, what I would suggest that you do is actually just scroll down. Don't worry about the actual file structures and things. GitHub's confusing if you're not used to uh, using it. And so we're just going to go down and then we can sort of see there we've got the information about Dwarf Therapist. It will then sort of have the different areas where it's got like the latest releases always published in the projects releases page. And so we want to go to that one through there. So it's gone to github.com dwarf hyphen therapist slash dwarf hyphen therapist. Now if we go and go to the projects releases page, so let's just go to that one. 
and have a look. We then have all the different releases for the actual game itself. And so we've got DF 0.50 Test 2. This is only a test build at time of recording, but it works. It works very, very well. And so in this case, what we then end up doing with DF, um, with this, this particular one, I can either click on that or I can just go to Assets again. And we can then sort of see, in this case, we've got like a Linux version and a Windows version. And so I'm just going to go and grab the Windows version. So Dwarf Therapist uh, back in through here, not the source code. So again, select Assets, open it up, go back to this particular one. So I don't want version 41.2.5, which is, uh, this is for Dwarf Fortress uh, 4705. This one here is for testing for the Steam version. It doesn't say that in through here, but this is the Steam version. Eventually, I think it will then sort of have the actual explicit information. So this is another application. It's been around for an awfully long period of time. So let's just go and grab this one in through this side. We'll download it. This one also takes a little bit of time, but it's still a fairly small program overall. Just let it load in. Now, what I do with this is whenever I've got one of these, you can see there it's it, the zip file has then got the name of where it's actually going. I put this into a location I can find easily. So on my computer, I've just got like an area that you can sort of see in through there. I might just, uh, we don't need that anymore. So let's just get rid of that one. So we've just got the, the repository where we've got this one through this side. Uh, I just, like these are my different Dwarf Fortress versions. So I've got Dwarf, a Dwarf Fortress version 50 in through here under a little area called games. But put it wherever you're comfortable with it to go. Uh, and you can see I've got test one. I don't have test two in here at this stage. So uh, I'm glad I've, I've downloaded it. <laughs> so let's just go and grab that one. I'm just going to drag this, this, uh, this area back out from the zip file and just place it in there. And so that will then sort of load in very, very quickly. I can now get rid of that. Now that we've got this one in here, I'm just gonna run it from the executable within this directory. So if I go back into here, now I am running the game, remember. So the game is actually running. So that's actually, and this is important for uh, Dwarf Therapist. So the game is actually running in through here. Go back out again, just let the program catch up. And so this is inside the new test version. I then just double click Dwarf Therapist. And um, I'm not going. I'm just going to run this one. I don't. I, I do trust the uh, publisher in this case. Uh, open we go. It will then load in the information from the game. Eventually, there we are. So it presents things. It prevents. It presents a, a spreadsheet of how to then manage your fortress and how to manage your dwarves in particular. So it doesn't manage things that you don't get to control. And so we've got different sorts of things. This is actually my defaults from using test version number one. But if I go back across and do nothing, it just gives me a full list of dwarves. Uh, I won't go through in a lot of detail how to use this because there's so many different ways to do this. And I have done other content about how to use dwarf therapists. But in, in essence, the way it sort of does work is that each dwarf is run down through this side into here. Um, you have different ways of then managing your dwarves. And so if you hover over any of them, you can then sort of see what what the, you know, what they like, what they dislike, uh, what they're good at. So this particular dwarf is an adequate cheese maker, for example, adequate animal trainer. So anything that, that they've got skills in will then sort of display. Uh, it will then show the skill levels out of 20. So you can see through here, Asmal is a master stone crafter. And so you can see he's legendary with stone, his stone crafting. If we hover over his name or her name, we can then sort of see that all the different things that this particular character is very good at. And so legendary stone crafter, master grower, proficient metal crafter. So this is a very, very skillful individual in through this side. So the numbers indicate their skill levels. You can see farming at level 12. We've got another uh, farming level 17. So if you need particular skills, and quite often mining is one that you sort of do require, I can then just go and click on mining to see, okay, who are my best miners? And these, these are my best miners. I've got a level 20 up through there, Udib. Uh, the, and I've got two Udibs, and they're both pretty good miners. I've got a uh, legendary miner up through there. We've got, a, uh, I think, a legendary plus one miner in through there as well. And this actually indicates how well they do their job. And so this can be quite, quite useful. If I just click that again, it'll then do it from the bottom one. If I just do it by name, it'll then sort by the name again. 
Uh, so that's the first one, which is the labors menu. So you can go through all of the different abilities and, um, and skill sets that the others have. You can also, if you're wanting to, turn off different sorts of things. Like, for example, if I wanted to not have my miners... You can do it in-game as well, by the way. Uh, but this is this is more nuanced. So you can actually... You can do this sort of the same thing by setting up, like, labor menus and then having things sort of tweak. But if we had, for example, we went to our miners and thought, we don't want the miners doing any hauling. In fact, you can see there that they've already been designated to not do hauling from in-game. But I can just go and click on the hauling back and through here and double click. It's just not doing it this time. Why is it not doing it? Um, it should have done it. I'm not sure why, why it's not. Anyway, you normally you can actually just go across and click it. I'm not sure what's going on in through here. <laughs> but uh, normally you can just go through and say, I don't want these guys doing the mining. And I don't know why that's not doing it today. Anyway, usually, let's see, yeah, toggle hauling. Okay, so what do we need to do there? It's not right click. I'm not sure, it normally would come up in here. I'll just try another com little command that I do a lot, which is if I'm gonna rename a dwarf, set nickname, test, just click on okay. Yeah, it's, that, that works. I'll just get rid of those. But that's, um, so yeah, normally if you do designations, if I just quickly go across, if that's happening like that, uh, single click labor changes, yeah, I've got that one selected. I'm not sure why that's not working. Again, this is a test version. Maybe, maybe it's not working for whatever reason. I just don't know. But that will, often you'll be able to then make changes. And as long as you designate the changes, it will then put it back into the game again. So that's the labors. You've only got military as well, where you can then start to see, okay, well, who is good at the military? You can see this is the number of kills they've had. Like I've got a, a character down through here with 21 different kills. Um, we've got different skill sets with different like axes in through this uh, side. You can see our dwarves aren't very good at this point in time, but they're slowly getting their skills up. So again, 20 is the maximum for the skills. Uh, then they've got the different sorts of things where they've got like strength, agility, toughness. So I can see, okay, well, who's the strongest of the dwarves in the in the, in the fortress? We've got a couple at 94 out of 100, essentially. So extremely strong. These are mighty. So um, uh, Ubel and uh, Bomrek are both sort of mighty dwarves in this sort of instance. Now, if you're trying to evaluate for military, this can be a, a nice way to try to get your military you know, where they've either got incredible strength. Quite often, in endurance is very, very important. So you want to have, like, high endurance uh, characters for your military. That's often a good one to sort of start on just to sort of make sure that they can then stay in a fight and aren't going to get too tired too quickly. Um, so even even though they may not be the strongest, in fact, there's a few few in here, like Bomb Wreck into here, is part of our military, a Spear Dwarf. In our military, who is um, who has got very very good endurance, very very good strength, not very agile, very tough though as well. Doesn't recuperate all that well, and is, is not all that disease resistant. But that's the endurance is probably the most important in terms of your military. So you can really min max your approach to the game. Now I don't recommend that, but you can do it. Also, there are things of you know how well. They're going to be to actually then go and teach other other creatures. Like you can see through here, um, we've got certain like there's none of them are really ex excellent teachers. So teachers would be a good uh, one to actually have as a um, as a militia commander, for example. And then students will then learn faster. The the higher the level of student, the quicker they're going to learn as well. So again, you can sort of see who's a, who's good at listening and actually taking things on board. Uh, this will then just give you a bit of a feel for what they need to actually be equipping. So they've actually got some uh, some things like you know where there may be some issues with with their with their um, with their armor. For example, with the actual military, again you can sort of sort by um, you know by the by the military status and just say okay, well who's on duty or off duty. So we can sort of have a look at the whole military this way and just have them. So this is the actual military of the fortress. There's so many different ways of actually managing this, like the migration waves can be really, really useful. I'll just go into here and um, I'll just go to expand all. So this is like the arrivals that first came, then the next arrivals all the way through with the different migration waves of the fortress to sort of see what's going on. You can also turn on 
things, for example, like curses. If there's if, if one of your creatures or one of your dwarves is a is a wear creature, and this is an exploit, this is a cheat, but you can actually go through and say, okay, well, is anyone a vampire or a wear creature? Uh, we can just go across into options. We can go into um, I'm a dirty cheater. And go. I do put on the wound details. This can be quite useful. I don't see that as cheating as such. But you can highlight cursed units. When you do this, it will then show you uh, what that cursed unit has actually got. So I do actually have one in the fortress, and I found it without doing this. So it, I won't show it, but you can turn that one on if you wanted to. Uh, I didn't use this to do that, but you can you can use this if you're wanting to. Anyway, that's Dwarf Therapist. It is much more detailed and nuanced than what you can do in game. Uh, but uh, you know, it, it, it is good with what it actually does do. Other skills that they've actually then got. Um, again, if we just go expand all, Sure, just go to none. That way, that way, it is always sort of showing what's going on. But you can see there's a lot of things that do come up in the game, like whether they're a good speaker or poet. If they're sort of in the, um, if they're going to be uh, uh, working inside temples, um, you know, if they're sort of doing trading, there's going to be different bits and pieces in through here as well. Uh, there are different attributes, like how good they are with creativity, empathy, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You can see they're the same things that were then used for the uh, for the military skills. Uh, their actual roles as to you know, what they're going to be good at with the different sorts of roles in through here, like miners, carpenters, etc. And they're, they're, I guess their ability to sort of take on those roles, again, in a score out of 100. Uh, animals as well. You've got the animals in the in the fortress. Um, like there's a black bear in through there that can be, that is wild, but can be trained. Um, so there's all sorts of different stuff in through here as well. Like there's just heaps and heaps that you can then sort of actually have a bit of a look at. Um, again, I think you can actually go to butcher yeah, it's not actually it's, not, it's funny it's not letting me actually select oh, that one did see that one that blue cop can was was selectable for butchering so i can just go and grab a few of them actually some of these actually just can't be done anyway oh, that's because these are pets okay so we can if we wanted to just go okay butcher all of those and so they'll all then be designated for butchering that's what i thought would happen on the um on the other screen to be honest but if I don't like that, I can just go to minus and just get rid of those designations. It doesn't go into the game until you press the next one back over there. I'm not going to be saving this particular one. So if I was just going to go and get all of those, those things butchered, I can just go and do that and then just go and say, OK, commit the changes. They've now all been done and put into the actual game itself. And so it's now just connecting back through at the bottom there putting those ones back in there. And so they're now going to be uh, butchered. They're going to be designated for, for butchering. And uh, and so that's that's all done through there. So, and then health of the actual units as well. Anything that they've got, we've got a thirsty a thirsty dwarf down to this, this side. But this can be quite useful as well, just to sort of see what their abilities actually are. Like this particular one has got arterial damage. So an artery has been torn for some reason. Um, it's uh, it's got uh, it's got some uh, motor ner nerves have been severed in um, in what I don't in the right, the right upper arm and so there's been some sort of problem in through there as well. Anyway, that's uh, that's dwarf therapist, an incredible program. It really is amazing. Um, it's just so much to uh, to use and look at in here. Anyway, I've gone for nearly nearly an hour and a half now going through these these hacks I guess for dwarf uh, fortress. These I do recommend these. Um, this one probably not so much if you're happy to just sort of muddle along with the actual game itself, but this one can be. Now, why on earth isn't that letting me designate any of these? I just I don't know why I can't actually select these. Hmm. There must be something in here that I've actually that I've got uh, where I just where it's actually stopping me from actually designating. It's actually very very useful to be able to turn on or off. What the skill sets are that they can actually go and do. So I don't know what's happening there, but this is, as I say, a, an early version. Uh, I would suggest that most of the time when you come in, this will just be things where you can just go and designate stuff. But in this case, I, I can't, unfortunately. So I can't show you that aspect. Anyway, I'll leave it there, guys. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this um, this one-off episode of these different, uh, I guess, these different applications you can use along with. Um, with Dwarf Fortress, they certainly do enhance the enjoyment of Dwarf Fortress, and uh, they certainly do enjoy and enhance the management of Dwarf Fortress as well. In uh, they, they certainly even just get like a list of dwarves and sort of see what their skill sets are. It just it's easier than in game using this particular this particular tool. Anyway, I'll leave it there. I'll catch you next time.